VirtualBox is a great way to run virtual machines on your desktop, and it's easy to take the Linux VMs you've built with it and import them into Oracle Cloud. To import your first VirtualBox VM, we're going to walk through a four-step process. First, we're going to prepare the VM to boot correctly in the cloud. Then, we'll upload our VM disk, import the VM disk into a custom image, and finally launch that image as a new instance for us to access. And don't worry if you miss a command or detail while you're watching. We'll have all the important links and information in the description box below. Now, with your existing virtual machine, our first step is to prepare it to boot in the cloud by verifying the image is formatted correctly, then setting up the system with a serial console, pair of virtualized device drivers, and dynamic networking, then fully halting the machine. Now, to begin VM preparation, you'll need to check that your existing VM image is under 300 gigs, has an MBR partition table, uses BIOS booting, has only a single disk, and is formatted as a VMDK or QCOW2 file. Today, I'll just be using a copy of OpenSUSE installed with the default settings to show you how it works. With the image settings confirmed, we can move on to enabling the serial console so we can troubleshoot the machine if we need fallback access. To do that, we just edit the grub defaults file to update all these values, then regenerate its config using the grub2 mic config tool. We verify that worked by rebooting the machine, then running dmessage and looking for our updated kernel parameters. Next, we want to add paravirtualized device support by building the vertio drivers into our edit RD. This will only work on machines with a Linux kernel of version 3.4 or later, so we'll need to check uname a to make sure we're running a modern kernel. Then we can rebuild our edit RD with the Dracket tool telling it to add the QEMU module. Finally, we can make sure that it worked by checking the ls initrd command and looking for the vertio drivers, making sure they're present. Lastly, we need to clear any persistent networking configs so that way the VM doesn't try to use the interfaces that had been available in VirtualBox. To do that, we're going to empty the persistent net rules file, but keep the file in place. Be aware, if you restart the virtual machine, you'll need to perform the step again because the file will get repopulated. Now with all that done, we'll power off the instance by typing halt-p, and now your VM is fully prepared. Once we can see that the VM is powered off, we can start copying the VM disk from our desktop to object storage. Our desktop is already set up to use the OCI CLI and has a profile set up for this demonstration. Now this will take a bit. The transfer time is dependent on the size of the VM and on your internet bandwidth. Once the upload is complete, we can log into the OCI console to import the image. In the object storage bucket, we can look at the details of the image to find its URL and use that to import our image. If your system was able to use paravirtualized drivers, be sure to select paravirtualized mode to get the best performance. Once the image import process starts, it's going to take some time to complete. When the image import process is complete, a new instance can be launched directly from the image details page. Once the instance is running, we can log into it using SSH to access the machine. And there it is. You have successfully imported a VirtualBox virtual machine to Oracle Cloud. Go ahead and give it a try for yourself. If you don't already have an Oracle Cloud account, Go to cloud.oracle.com slash try it to sign up for a free trial today. Thanks for watching and have a good day.